Hello Aquarius, welcome to your April 2020 tarot card reading. It is airy season. I know there's like a million things going on in this world right now, but I just want to get into these cards. Now I'm trying to keep my readings as geared toward you as an individual right now, rather than like big collective kind of stuff. So like, what can we do in the meantime to be really empowered to make this year still really kick ass, right? Because I think there's a lot of things. So the first card that comes out is the King of Coins, which is really like a very calm, cool, collected kind of energy. I mean, he's got this whole like zen chilling out relaxing kind of vibe maybe some of you are enjoying this being inside maybe some of you aren't I don't know but I think ultimately there's a lot of good that comes out of it the king of coins is really natural when it comes to just sitting and waiting and having patience he's always going to work in the energetic field he's always really projecting out his desires and getting manifestation things going and so it's not like he's just really sitting there doing nothing, but he's using the power of his knowledge of how to work with energy in a really wonderful way. Now, the environment is the chariot. Now, in spite of what's going on, there's a lot of movement coming out in this reading for you guys. Um, I know travel is like really tough right now and there's a lot of travel bans, but yet I'm still seeing that maybe throughout April, as hopefully things lift up, maybe there is travel for some of you. Maybe it's not actual travel, maybe it's just long distance communication, that could definitely be it as well. Um, but I do see movement. I mean, we see this chariot, these horses are moving forward, there's stuff going on and you are bringing this to the table. Um, I suspect, again, a lot of people looking to Aquarius for leadership right now. Astrologically, as we've had Saturn move into Aquarius now, we're going to have Mars moving in there this week. And there's honestly like so many wonderful things that come from all this Aquarian energy. Plus, we have Aries Sun. For you guys, this is third house. There's this wonderful combination of fire and air going on for you right now. It's just, it's not as dense as it has been. And I think for that, a lot of air and fire signs are feeling feeling very grateful, like, oh, phew, thank goodness. And yet still there's this beautiful high level wisdom coming out as well. So it's not as though you're just going to go for the sake of going or go create for the sake of creating. There's a purpose to everything, which is really wonderful. I love the chariot card coming out. There is ascension going on. There is awakening going on for us individually, as well as the collective. There's a new perspectives, you know, we're really getting cracked open and this vulnerability that we're all like, oh, wow, you know, maybe I didn't realize how dependent I was on like society. Um, it's kind of really making us take this step back. But because we're taking this step back, we're going to be able to leap forward later. That's why the patience of the king of coins is really like just super on point. So I'm going to go ahead and put an image of the nine card block over here because the past couple months I've just had a lot of people ask me to see the card so we're gonna do it <laughs> right we're gonna do it put up there so you can see how everything is situated very first card comes out as the three of swords so okay there's been a disappointment there's a pandemic there's a lot of things going on in the workplaces. Maybe you've been laid off. Maybe there has been financial setback. Maybe it is just a feeling of tapping into the collective, you know, the, the, the collective consciousness with the fear kind of stuff. Okay, fine. It's very short lived though. A three of swords isn't normally that long because we have the rain clouds here. We have the rain coming and it does represent a great cleansing for us. So whatever loss there was, whatever disappointment there has been, you know, ultimately you may feel like it's going to last forever. But again, the wisdom of the king of coins coming out to play here and saying, this is about energy work right now. You don't really have to be doing things. You don't have to have a lot of movement in your life to make this kind of stuff go away. This is about the energy work. And I think a lot of Aquarians are doing a lot of meditations. You're doing a lot of like, you know, 
journaling or you are starting to plan or to strategize for things in the future. And even though it feels like nothing is happening, the shift in the energy is going to start really coming online super fast. So this is a temporary perception, like perceiving stagnation, perceiving being stuck, perceiving, you know, a, a lack of movement, all those kinds of things. You know, a lot of us are staying indoors. We're trying to do the whole like, let's help everybody out kind of thing. And I'm sure you're a part of that as well. And that's great. But I don't think it's going to last very long um, because the next card that comes out is the fool. All right. Now, one totally sorry. Let me go back to the four of coins. One note that I kind of have to talk about is, you know, financial conservatism to just be financially and fiscally conservative in the upcoming month. You might be doing that anyway because you're not going out and you're not spending money on food and entertainment and all of that perfectly fine um, but i think you should keep that going and to you know keep your money as close to you as possible right now uh, we've got the fool which is the releasing it's like the releasing of the hounds kind of thing like letting it free i love this energy for aquarius because by nature you are a very free loving very independent very free flowing spirit and the fool really encapsulate the essence of the aquarian archetype the fool is never really afraid of anything and that's why this three of swords doesn't really freak me out that much and i don't really want to put a lot of emphasis on it because it just seems to be like okay a point of tension and then it releases and and we just continue on the chariot wants to just bypass things and not in a way that is repressing anything not in a way that is negative or unhealthy but in a way of like i just don't need to hang on to this let's just go and actually maybe what's going on globally might be helping you with things that are happening on your individual life you know because sometimes it we need something so big to put things in perspective especially when it comes to partnerships and obviously in the cards you can see two of cups ten of cups emperor empress so there's definitely some kind of a connection or relationship coming out in these cards so because of this perspective shift because of these kinds of changes i think in a lot of ways you really are feeling like you can be more pure and you can be more authentic in in your soul's essence here fool is never afraid the fool is never afraid of things that happen it's not afraid of change it's not afraid of adapting it's not afraid of living life different it's just like okay great new challenge let's go for it new adventure great let's go for it and that's it that's all it is um the fool energy is easy <laughs> if we could all be more fool like i think we would all be a lot more celebratory of the potential of what could come out of this right i know there's a lot of negative people out there right now a lot of you know people who are really tapping into all the conspiracy negative kind of stuff and you know that's by choice i think aquarians this month are going to choose the optimism they're going to choose to see the good things out of this because things are moving guys i can't lie these are what the cards say movement is movement i don't know what to tell you Okay, like so all the seeds you're planting in this beautiful airy season, they will come to harvest. Some of you might be falling more in love or developing more of a connection with someone this month because maybe you're communicating with them more because there's not all these distractions going on. For some reason, I feel like Aquarius has a very streamlined path, just like everything is so clear. It's just like, you know, like how these horses, they have like blinders on, right? Just to make sure they don't get distracted. Then they keep their eye on the target here. Make sure you do keep your eye on the target. You know, like what goals did you really set in place for yourself at the beginning of the year? Just keep doing that. I mean, it's not hard. It's not complicated. Like I said, King of Coins really works for things in the energetic field. Um, there is a mundane component in terms of like actually doing some things, but I don't think it's hard work. It's not hard. It's not daunting. It's not overbearing. It's just you doing what you do and doing it well and getting lost in this beautiful process. It's very magical. Okay. Airy season is always very magical. So if there are people you want to reach out to, please, by all means, reach out. Of course, everyone will be happy to hear from you. Everyone loves to hear from their Aquarian friends. Everyone loves to hear from their Aquarius children. I mean, it's just like, it, it's, um, it's heartwarming when you get the opportunity to really speak to an Aquarian, right? So, you know, focus is on the big 
important thing, like what's really important in this life. That's really what the Ten of Cups truly represents. You know, uh, I think it's all materialistic and superficial goals aside what really matters. And I do feel a deepening in your relationships, guys. I really do. Um, an opening of love, deeper, more unconditional love. Sometimes it does require a crisis to really make us get our crap out of the way. You know, all of our fears and all of our insecurities. And but like when there's something bigger than us, we do feel more vulnerable. And that vulnerability releases a lot of the barriers. And then we are just free to just love. We are free to just care. We are free to just connect. And I think this is a very... Uh, a wonderful time for connection. I don't, you know, <laughs> like I say, the cards don't lie. Ten of cups, two of cups. I mean, if you're in a relationship, there's a deepening here. You're getting to know each other on new levels. You're getting to take care of each other on new levels. You're communicating, again, probably more than normal. Uh, for those of you who have children, this works on a child-parent level. This works on friendship levels, you know. Sometimes just feeling that desire to reach out and make sure everyone is fine and everyone's handling and no one's going insane, you know, being cooped up and all of that. And I think, you know, this is a, a very... Um, it is a time for us to see a lot of good fortune, right? It is. It's a time for us to see good fortune, and the good fortune really is in the people, really is in the learning experiences, because we know there have been a lot of learning experiences lately. And see, what's so beautiful about 2020, and I've been saying it since the beginning of the year, you know, we have um, Saturn coming into Aquarius, We're going to be doing a little bit of a retrograde back and forth. So Aquarius doesn't, or the Saturn doesn't really get to open up truly until 2021 when it's like fully in Aquarius and moving forward with that transit. Um, you know, Saturn in Aquarius is, Saturn really actually prefers to be in Aquarius more so than Capricorn because Aquarius is so, you know, it's so light, it's so airy, it's so expansive, whereas Capricorn is still very heavy, very dense. And so we, we receive the blessings of Saturn during a Saturn and Aquarius transit. So it's really an amazing time for all of us. Um, but 2020 is the year of setting the foundational blocks. And hopefully this is a part of it, right? How am I going to start to relate to someone better? How am I going to forgive? How am I going to love more unconditionally better? How can I be better at that? And then the King of Coins, again, you know, like working more on the manifestation level, and I love the red of this card because it's very root chakra oriented. So it is very grounded. You know, it's very humble. So it's not about the big material goals right now. And when you take the big material goals away, I think that's when all this movement really starts to occur. That's when we have this kind of shift in, in density here. Now, I love the emperor. I love the empress coming out. I think you are taking on more the emperor energy, whether you're a man or a woman. I do think you're taking on the emperor quality a little bit more, given the masculinity of the king of cups. Just a little bit, meaning you are, again, more of the take charge. Let's go out. Let's do something. You know, plus you've got Mars in your sign. So that Mars energy is really ramping up for you guys. And so there's a lot of people leaning and depending on you. I, I suspect there is some kind of partnership in your life. Again, it doesn't have to be a lover. It can be anyone in your family or any one of your friends that there is a let's do this together kind of vibe. And I like how people right now, I, I'm not sensing a lot of arguing. I'm not sensing a lot of fighting. Hopefully that's not what this three of swords is. Normally this isn't really a card of arguing or anything. It's more of a card of just disappointment or sadness or loss of some kind. Um, but, you know, hopefully there's not a lot of drama going on in your relationships right now. When, when an emperor and an empress come out back to back, side by side, both upright, it tells me that in general relations are pretty good. It tells me that you're each fulfilling roles, you're each fulfilling expectations, and you're each doing your part. People really starting to 
live up and to live into what they need to do. Really living more fully, which is weird, right? We're living a little bit more fully and a little bit more wholly. More wholesome, not H-O-L-Y, W-H-O-L-Y. <laughs> more of more as a whole. And together, two whole people make a whole unit. And there's a lot of cards coming out that indicate the unity. So, I mean, this is a really beautiful reading, you guys. And if you don't have like a lover, this might just be you working and collaborating with people in a way that you don't normally do it. And I think people are really going to be shocked as to what they're capable of doing after this period in time. Really shocked as to, you know, how much we let the little stuff bug us, how much we're hanging on to fear, how much we're hanging on to insecurities, how much we allow other people's opinions of us to determine what we do, you know, and all that stuff is just going to get like just shaken off and just not going to be relevant anymore. All of a sudden, it just simply doesn't matter. And that's when you start living into your majestic nature, which is coming out here, which is really quite lovely. And last card, we get the nine of coins reversed. When it's upright, I say this is real independent. This is an energy of someone, you know, rising from the ashes kind of on their own. When it's reversed, to me, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to really open myself up. I'm ready to share. I am ready to encapsulate or incorporate other people into my grand vision. And that's being amplified by the Ten of Cups in the very center of the reading. This is Aquarius stuff, right? Aquarius is the place where the individual becomes lost to the greater collective, right? That's really what Aquarius and Pisces are all about. Aries through Capricorn, it's very much about learning about yourself. But by the time we end Capricorn and enter into Aries, right? Not in terms of like transits, but the archetypes themselves, the story, um, that is when we we balloon up and we blossom up. So here we are having to all work together, having to collaborate, and we see how possible it really is. And that's going to change your course, I really think, in your course in your career, your course in your future relationships. There is a ascension going on, for sure, for sure, whenever the chariot comes out. I don't know that this is going to be a month where you really need to worry about uh, hopefully you're not someone who's out there looking for a new job. If you are, I don't see it lasting long. Like I, I really don't because of the nature of how these cards came out. It's just a small kind of point of tension and then it will ease up fairly quickly. Um, the Oracle cards we got, we did get a financial constraint card. So I think that has to do a little bit with this four of coins that came out. They're kind of mirroring one another. And it's just that conservatism to just continue to be conservative and to continue to be smart and intelligent with your money and things like that. Um, but the next card that comes out of after that is a part of fortune, which is a card of financial increase. So that's why I'm saying I, I don't think it's a long lasting kind of deal. Like it's not something to be too worried about. Part of fortune is really when we align with what we're really good at when we align with our natural affinities. The part of fortune is a point on our chart where we can make money more easily, the king of coins style, right? We can make a king of coins kind of fortune with little effort because this is the kind of work that comes so naturally to us that it doesn't even feel like work. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this camera down. We'll pull out the cards for the comprehensive. See in just a sec. Okay, Aquarius. So I'm going to clarify uh, each of these two cards using the exact same deck. So let's focus first on the King of Coins. Seven of Wands, okay. Five of Wands. So there's a little bit of the chaos. Some of you are arguing a bit. Let's see. And the Seven of Swords. Okay, let's take a look at the chair. Oh, okay. <laughs> that one definitely wanted to come out. Four of Swords, beautiful. There's that piece that I think the King of Coins really encapsulates, which is really beautiful. One more Ace of Swords. Let's do one more for the Chariot. 
Oh, and another Three of Swords. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at this Three of Swords up here. Now, for those of you who are totally new to my channel, the cards I'm pulling out here will cover in the comprehensive. The link will be in the description box down below. We usually talk for about another 20 to 25 minutes about these cards. So get a little bit more detail. The story develops a little bit more. All right, Three of Swords. There's your card, Aquarius. Death, okay. One more. Page of Swords, great. Four of Coins. Another page. The childlike nature is super important right now. It's so critical that you tap into the more adventurous side of everything rather than the stress of everything. Um, this really is a beautiful time to reboot, to reset, to lay new foundational blocks for things. And, um, and to just keep things going, right? Keep things going. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of financial concern. Makes sense. One more for this full card. Yep, see, everything is going to balance out. Eight of Wands. Feeling a lot more tension with these clarifiers than I did the first set of cards. Oh, another Eight of Wands, beautiful. You must be battling Zen and chill versus stress. And there you are again. Really masculine energy coming out from you guys. Um, forward thinking, strategic, logical, you know, like I say, you guys really being more of the rock here for your families and for your significant others more so than the other way around. Maybe that's a scary place for some of you to be. I don't know. I think some of you might be getting pushed into things that you're not quite ready. Like there might be some of you whose connections are deepening and it's really uncomfortable. That might be a hard thing for you. Ooh, damn, three of swords came out three times. It's each deck. Clearly the circumstances in the world right now are forcing you guys to really look deep within yourselves. It's forcing you to confront fears, forcing you to open up, forcing you to be out of sorts. Last one, nine of coins reversed. Definitely gonna be a lot to talk about in this second reading, that's for sure. I feel like this bottom one here. Oh, another Empress. Great. Do one more for that. And King of Wands. All righty. And another card of movement at the bottom of the deck. So this is where we'll pick up in the comprehensives. Um, thank you guys so much. I really wish you nothing but the best. Have an amazing airy season. Okay, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.